the next few days, The Athletic is just £1 per month for six months. See the link in the description to sign up now. France have perhaps the deepest pool of talent available to any tournament side. And in Didier Deschamps, a coach who has won the World Cup as a player and manager, they are rightly the tournament favourite. But they're not a complex side tactically. They tend to play a 4-2-3-1 or a 4-4-2, but with Antoine Griezmann acting as a second striker and dropping off. He also leads an impressive press and drifts around to create from the half spaces. France's fullbacks will push quite high, allowing the quick wide attackers to drift in field. And at the tip of the spear is Kylian Mbappe, pacey, predatory and capable of winning games single-handedly. But of course he doesn't need to. France's midfield boasts a number of impressive options, but N'Golo Kante is likely to anchor and screen the back four, dropping off to form part of a secure double pivot. Here, Deschamps may choose to use the passing and ball-carrying agility of Paul Pogba or the shuttling and aggression of Adrian Rabiot. No slouch with the ball either. France can sit back against stronger teams, secure in their shape and defensive resilience, and use that as a platform, or win back the ball quickly and then unleash their quick attackers, with Griezmann as the conduit and the fullbacks acting in support. In fact, France's only issue may be imposing themselves on teams who want to sit very deep and play defensively themselves. But with the squad that Deschamps can field, they'll be able to pick specific players for specific games without diluting the overall quality. Germany are in a curious place. World Cup winning head coach Joachim Löw has announced his departure after the tournament and results have been mixed, including a humiliating 6-0 defeat to Spain in November and an embarrassing home defeat to North Macedonia. Germany have mostly used a 4-3-3, although 4-2-3-1 has been preferred at times. They will press and play vertically with pace. Joshua Kimmich anchors the midfield and is a hugely intelligent, positionally aware defensive midfielder who can also create with his long passing or curving crosses from the half spaces. Nerve has experimented with using centre-backs as full-backs, who can push more into midfield than overlap, but Germany can also use more traditional players in this role who provide width. At least one midfielder, often Leon Goretzka or Ikai Gundogan, or both, is tasked with pushing forwards to support attacks, while ahead, Germany favour a fluid, rotating front three of quick attackers like Timo Werner and Serge Gnabry, who can interchange and attack the channels. This leaves space for the advanced midfielders to move into, but can also mean that there is no significant striking presence in the box. And this is one of Germany's areas of weakness. They can lack a focal point. That and Löw's selection policy, which has seen huge numbers of players used in the last year, which can leave Germany looking disjointed. While in players like Manuel Neuer and Joshua Kimmich, Germany have world-class operators in certain positions, there has been a lot of flux around them, not least because he doesn't seem to know his best team and is yet to cure significant defensive issues. Germany have the players and the reputation to beat most teams in Europe, but they'll also carry an uncharacteristic fragility into this tournament, which leaves them vulnerable in such a strong group. Hungary are clearly the weakest team in this group of death, but that doesn't mean that there'll be pushovers. Coach Marco Rossi has brought the team on leaps and bounds, and with a spine of Bundesliga players in Peter Galacsi, Willy Orban and Dominic Zoboslai, there is plenty of top-flight quality and experience. Recent fixtures have seen a consistent use of the 3-5-2, with Adam Noj anchoring midfield and providing cover with the back three for the wingbacks and two more attack-minded midfielders to get forwards in support of two strikers. Laszlo Kleinheiser is a real threat pushing into the box, and Hungary like to use their big, aerially strong centre-forwards to win knockdowns or head the ball on to runners in behind. Indeed, Hungary's use of that aerial strength is their main weapon. They'll approach quite patiently, looking to work the ball wide for the wing-backs to cross to the two strikers, who then either fashion an effort directly or get the ball to those midfield runners. It also makes Hungary a threat from corners and free kicks. Defensively, they'll fall back into a 5-3-2, but tend to be snappy and aggressive against weaker sides, with Naj leading the efforts in midfield. Gulacci's ability and the strength of centre-backs allows Hungary to play a fairly high line against weaker teams, and the wing-backs will push up to engage in those wide areas. 
Should Hungary fall back too deep, though, and resort to pumping balls forwards to the strikers, they'll find it hard to impose themselves on teams who keep the ball well or keep much possession themselves. Defending champions Portugal are coached by Fernando Santos. And as well as winning the Euros in 2016, they won the Nations League in 2019. Santos has mostly used a 4-3-3 in recent fixtures, although he does also sometimes set up as a 4-2-3-1. The central striking berth is of course filled by Cristiano Ronaldo, who tends to be flanked by two quick, mobile attacking midfielders like Bernardo Silva or Diogo Jota. This unit flexes in and out. Ronaldo will drift wide left to cut in field, and the attacking midfielders will sometimes move wide too. Behind them, Bruno Fernandes is a creative presence, pushing up or dropping off to move the ball quickly forwards before joining attacks. The attacking midfielders will press high, looking to swarm around the opposition and transition quickly. The midfield tends to be anchored by one sitting midfielder, often Danilo, and one deeper passing midfielder. The fullbacks offer the most width, and in Rafael Guerrero and Joao Cancelo, Portugal have two of the world's best. One fullback may stay deeper to protect the back line though, which is ably anchored by Ruben Dias. And here, the width is maintained by one of the attacking midfielders instead. Portugal's squad is full of tricky technical players and their quick interchanges and ball carrying make the side a huge threat going forwards. In Ronaldo, they have a high-class goal scorer, but this side can score through a variety of players and even pose a good threat from set pieces. With a solid defence behind all this pace and creativity, Portugal are a dangerous team, and it's hard to discern any obvious area of weakness. One million subscribers. Thanks for helping us get to the supermassive YouTube number. One million. Oh, we're feeling pretty great, and we hope that you feel great too. And now we're gonna use it as a cynical advertising opportunity to see if you'd like to subscribe to The Athletic. Yes, that's right. For just £1 per month for six months, you can enjoy everything The Athletic has to offer, including the best online coverage of football available with journalists such as David Ornstein, Amy Lawrence and Daniel Taylor. There's in-depth coverage of every Premier League team, not just the big six, not to mention journalists covering ten other sports. Yeah. The Athletic is the place for the people who are really loving football, who want the conclusive take on the interesting stories. One pound per month now, for a period lasting six whole months, yeah. Theathletic.com slash T for football.